guys. Happy Tuesday. Hope you're all doing well. I just wanted to reach out and give you kind of a little info on short sales and I'm winging it here. So um, we're not going to do a class in short sales, first of all, just because every bank handles the short sale differently. So I couldn't possibly teach the process um, for all different lenders. And you're not going to come across that many, I don't think. I think um, unless the economy takes a turn, we're you know, we, we see some every now and then, but they're not that popular, not like they used to be in 2008, 9, and 10. Anyways, first step is to get an authorization to release information forms signed by your clients. They need to fill it out. It includes their loan number, their lender information, their social security numbers, and then you're going to want to put on the bottom, there's a place to put your name and possibly my name if you want me to help you with it. That form they sign and then we will send it off to the lender. You'll send it off to the lender. You'll call the lender and say, I need to talk to you. I have a listing that may become a short sale. I need to get this authorization to release information form over to you. Where do I send it? And they'll have a specific way to send it, whether it's a fax number or an email that they'll have you send it to. You'll send that form to them. It will take them about 24 to 48 hours to process that form and then they'll start talking to you. Um, sometimes they have a website where the borrowers can log in and do it online, but they'll tell you when you call them to, to do that. But the step, first step is just to get permission so you can start talking to the bank. Then you're going to talk to the bank, and every time you call the bank, I have a file. Let me show you. Should have been more prepared. But I have a file for my short sales. Inside, on the inside cover, this looks ridiculous. Um, but I put all the information about the lender up top, the address, the last four of the borrower's socials, because every time you call, they're going to verify the full address, the last four of their socials. Um, you'll want to make sure you have the most current phone number for the lender, for the short sale department. Um, and, and your number one goal is to pester them, because if you're not pestering them, they're, the short sale is going to be put at the bottom of the pile, and they're not going to process it. If the home is posted to go to foreclosure soon, then they will take action on the short sale, but you've got to be talking to them really fast. We can always, always, always stall a, a foreclosure. So the minute you have anybody who's like, my home's about to be foreclosed on Tuesday, next week, it, it wouldn't be next week, it's always the first Tuesday of the month, but if you know someone whose home's going to go to foreclosure, get me involved, we can stall the foreclosure, but we got to work fast. Um, so back to my point, I keep everything in a file, I keep every dialogue with the lender, I don't know if you saw that, as notes. So I do dates and notes all over and eventually this whole thing will be covered. Um, but you, you'll you want to, once, once the form is filed, they start talking to you. You'll explain to them the situation. They will then tell you the next steps. Some of them use a program called Equator, which is an online program where you submit everything online and have to do all these tasks online through their program. Um, several banks use Equator. Other banks are all just fax it in and I mean everybody's different so there's just no way I can teach you guys how to do it. You just have to basically understand the process and stay on top of the lender and your borrower to make sure it happens. The borrower has to apply for the short sale just like they would purchasing the home. And, and let me back up and explain what a short sale is. I should have started with that. So short sale is when a homeowner needs to sell the home but they owe money. They have to get out of it and pay money at the table to sell it, and they don't have the money to pay that. Does that make sense? So maybe they bought it a year ago, new construction, the builder's still building, there's no equity in that community yet, and the homeowner needs out. Whether it's they can't afford the home anymore, because a lot of times the property taxes are too high and they can't afford it, um, or it's a divorce, or it's a relocation for a job, there usually is some kind of hardship, and there has to be a hardship for the short sale to get approved, but there's gotta be a hardship that says, we can't afford to pay the difference to get out of this home and we need to sell it. And they have no assets or no money to pay. You can't apply and do a short sale and keep 100000 in the bank. Like, that's not going to work. They have no money to do it. Now, they don't necessarily have to be behind in payments. They can be current on their payments and their credit will be much less affected if they're paying their mortgage um, and do the short sale. However, one of the advantages to a short sale is it could take several months to do and they can live there and not make their payment, but they have to understand that that's going to kill their credit. Um, so it just depends on the situation. Um, what else do I want to make sure you know about a short sale? Oh, okay. So federal guidelines used to stipulate from the eight, nine, 10 housing crisis up until I think 
2014 or 15, I have to go back and look, I can't remember, but government said you can do a short sale and you're not going to pay taxes or be penalized for doing that short sale on that income. Um, that has gone away and now the, oops, that means I have to leave. the lender has said and the government has said the lenders can issue essentially a 1099 on the difference between what you owe when you sell the home and what the bank takes the hit for. Does that make sense? So the bank ends up eating $30,000 and the bank will pay your commissions, closing costs, everything. Um, but whatever that difference is between what they owed and the O part could be, you know, late fees, attorney fees, the appraisal for the short sale, there's a cost to doing the short sale, all that gets added on to what they owe. So let's say they end up owing 300,000 and you short it and sell it at 250, that $50,000 difference between the two is considered, could be considered income to your clients and they could pay taxes on that income. Now, chances are they're not, I mean, every situation is different. So they just, they have to understand that and they should talk to a CPA to understand those, that consequence. Um, but I have not seen many lenders do, issuing the 1099 income against them. So some do, some don't, it, you just don't know, um, but they should be prepared and understand that that is, a, that is something that can happen to them. Um, what else? Any questions? Hi guys. Um, any questions out there before I shut this off? I hope that helps. Again, every situation is different. Every bank is different. Um, the process, let me explain a little bit more. So if you have a listing, you do a short sale, the buyer, your job is to get an offer quickly. Um, and, and so the buyer though, with that offer, it may be a low ball offer and you may not know if the bank's going to take the short sale right away. Like they're going to, the bank's going to order an appraisal and come back and tell you what they want for the home. Um, and so that buyer doesn't begin any part of his due diligence, doesn't start the option period. None of that happens until the bank has approved the actual short sell that figure and said proceed. Then they start their due diligence, then they start their option period. So there's a short sale amendment that would be attached to the offer. Um, and that protects that buyer so that they don't have to spend any money on the home until the short sale is approved. Um, and that short sale process, approval process, can take 30 days from the time you get your offer. It could take six months or a year, just depends on the lender. And I wish things were more consistent so I could teach you a process, but they just start kind of all over the board. But the first step again is like get an authorization to release information, start talking to the bank, find out how they're going to want you to handle the short sale. Then make sure you get an offer. And sometimes you just got to drop the price quickly to get that offer. And then you can always adjust the price and find another buyer if this buyer won't come up, if the bank makes you come up a little bit. But the goal is just to get an offer to get the short sale process going and then we can always revisit and reconstruct the situation if we need to. I hope that helps um, and feel free to reach out and we can talk more one on one. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Maybe if I can end the video. <laughs> Bye.